I have my list. I have my list and I checked it twice. And I'm gonna find out who's dog meat or OP. Alrighty, okay, so yeah. We're gonna talk about the top five soul laners right now. I haven't made one of these in a while, but it's definitely due. Especially because the meta has shifted quite a bit with the changes to Warrior's Axe and some of the nerfs to the top gods and all that good stuff. So, as always, we're just going to count down from number five. We're going to throw in some honorable mentions in there. And, of course, while we talk about each character, we're going to give their uh, most optimal build or what I like to build on them right now. So you guys have a general like idea how to be playing these characters. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into it. What you're going to notice in this list is there's a lot of Warriors because the Warriors Axe changes, having 15 power on it, has changed a lot. It's definitely very, very, very good. So, yeah. All right. Coming in at number five, I have Mulan. The thing about Mulan is she wins basically every single lane except for, like, against Ardeo. And um, I think it can be a little bit hard against characters like Osiris. But for the most part, especially once you get your two upgraded on Mulan, this character is ridiculous. She is unstoppable. So she is at number five just because she does fall off a little bit late game and she's more of like a skill dependent god in my opinion because you got to be hitting your threes, uh, especially when it comes to the team fights. And um, once you go in with her, it's gonna it's a little bit harder to like get out. She's kind of like chalk in that way. But if you're skillful enough and kind of keep your eye on your positioning and everything like that, then you'll be good, especially if you can get like a blink thorns or something like that. So basically with every build you're going to see is that you're starting with uh, Warrior's Axe and Tier 1 Blackthorn. People are, keep asking me about Blackthorn, about why I'm actually using it uh, when I said it was bad. Well, my opinions change, and opinions can change all the time, because opinions are like assholes. Everybody has them, right? That makes sense! So, um, I actually think Blackthorn's pretty good now, especially if you're going Sigil, just because it gives you all that mana sustain that you that you need. But it's also just a really good bridge item right now. It's one of the few items that gives you 40 power. Like, if you go and look at this tree, every item in this tree, besides shifters, when you're above, uh, above, when you're above 75% health, gives you less than that power. Like, this one gives you 40, but it's really expensive. Blackthorn's 400 gold cheaper. Um, this one only gives you 25 power. This only gives you 20. So that early game damage, 40 power, is just really, really good and just gives you so much health. So every single time on Mulan, you just go this start go for health pots and uh i either go blink to start and you can blink to the first wave to get you pressure for level two to get you know some pressure in the lane to win you the lane or you can go beads if they have a lot of cc either way most games you're going to be going beads blink or thorns if they don't have a lot of cc and then there's some rare scenarios where you can go like a curse donk um if they have a lot of healing or maybe even horrific if they have a ton of auto attackers but so like i said you're going to going going to be going into blackthorn first item into mystical mail into bulwark of hope if they don't have if they don't have a mage that's very threatening early game, then you can consider not going Bulwark of Hope. But the thing about this item is it just makes you so tanky, even if they don't have a lot of magical damage, because the shield that it gives you, the CCR, all the health that it provides, like all that's really good stuff. So, um, so usually what I do is I go straight into the Pridwin. Pridwin's a very very good item on Mulan. If they have some crit, then consider going Spectral. I've been messing around with not going Spectral lately. I think it's maybe a little bit overrated, and I'd rather be able to kill them. So in order to kill them, you would go something like a Void Shield here, gives you a little bit more damage, gives you some pen for you and your jungler when you're diving that diving them. I always type this in and it never works, but... And then you always upgrade a Sundering Axe. Always, always, always. And there's a very rare scenario where you go Hero's Axe. Sundering Axe is much better. Even next patch, when they nerf it, Sundering Axe will still be good. It will still be the go-to, in my opinion. So this will be the full build. Like I said, consider going like a Spectral here, if they have some crit. Um, if you have to switch up an item for like a Pestilence, because they just have a ton of healing, definitely consider that. Although I think Bulwark of Hope is kind of worth it on its own. Um, and if you're against a Magical in lane, go Blackthorn, Runic Shield, then Mystical Mail, then go Pridwin, and... Yeah, that's basically it. Basically, just switch out. If you're ever against a magical in lane, just go black thorn into your magical defense. Unless it's a really low pressure character where you don't even have to build defense for them, such as like a Jing Ten or a Sobek. So, yep, that is Mulan at number five. At number four, we have Nike. You know, you could argue, like always, that the top fives, you could argue these characters might be a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, depending on who you are. But, um, you know, Nike is definitely a very, very strong character right now. Her shield is just ridiculous. She is probably the best late game tank in the entire game for the most part. Uh, maybe you could like throw in Cthulhu with her or something, but um, she is just ridiculous. Even though Sunder is good against her, it's very easy to miss Sunder. Um, and it's also very easy to juke it out. And it doesn't even matter if they do Sunder you still. If you're able to blink ult and get your ult on everybody, slow them down, it's just really, really strong. She's a really safe character. So basically every single game I go blink on her. They have a lot of CC go uh, beads, but for the most part, almost every single game you want to have blink thorns. So your late game is just ridiculous and you can dive ADCs and do whatever you want. So... Yep, a pretty similar build. It's going to change a little bit because you should never, ever build um, Pridwin on Nike because it does not work on her. 
It literally just doesn't work. So, But other than that, the build's going to be pretty similar. You still want to go Bulwark of Hope. It kind of compounds with her shield. It's just really, really nice. Um, at this point, Nike is one of the few characters where you can just go absolutely full tank and not have to worry too much. So in that way, I think Spectral is fine. You don't need to go extra damage on her like you maybe do with like an Achilles or like a Mulan or some other characters. So you can literally go something like this, especially if they're going great, go the Spectral. But you could go something like this and then upgrade to the Sundering Axe, and this would be your full build, really full tank the whole time. Although, I will say that you can sell your Black Hello, for, like a, for like a Brawlers or like an Erendite. Erendite is really nice on this character, so that's something to consider. And then, with every single one of these builds, if you have Blackthorn, late game, you do want to sell it for like a Brawler. So, it's not just Nike. It's the same applies to Mulan and the other characters that we're going to talk about. Brawlers, most of the time, just because it's a really nice damage item. 15 flat pins are really good for base damage and just killing carries, but also because the passive is going to help you deal with the lifesteal that the ADC has, any healing that's in the game, which there is a lot most of the time. So, yeah. Cavachin, thank you so much for the eight months in a row, dude. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. And Mad Rock, thank you for the 37 months in a row. Welcome back, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Coming in at number three, I have Ardio. Now, the reason I have Ardio here is because this is a ranked list plus SPL. So, in ranked, Ardio is a very good character. But if you're not invading blues with this character, you're going to fall off late game. And you will feel the, the effects of being a late game Ardio in a lot of games. Uh, she has no CC immunity, so that's a problem. But she is, like, the single best laning character in the game. So, if your team knows what they're doing and they play off of your pressure and they fight around you, the first 15 minutes of the game, Ardio is unkillable and she kills everybody. She just does whatever she wants. So, um, But, yeah, I, you could argue that she'd be a little bit higher, but, you know is what it is um the same thing's gonna apply to her you go warrior's axe um now this is where things get a little bit different because you can't go black throne on a, a, a magical of course so you can go tier one breastplate and go those extra pots what is it four extra pots um or five yeah i think it's four and then plus one multi something like that right or is it three just three 600 1200 1250 yeah, so it's four plus one. Okay, so you can get like something like this, or you can go three health pots plus a hog just to increase your clear a little bit, but you know, whatever. You can do whatever, really. And then basically, every game you want to go blink beads. The reason you go beads on this character versus like a Nike. Nike has a lot of safety. She has CC immunity. Ardu has none of that. She can get her dash interrupted and stuff like that. So you're going to have beads most of the game or most of the time in most games. And it's still fine. You'll still be able to um, pressure people late game and be very, very tanky. You're going to rush into your breastplate, then go straight into a mystical mail, then go straight into a bulwark of hope. This is basically the first three items every single game, unless you're against a magical. If you're against a magical, then you want to switch this up for a Genji's, but go something similar like this. And honestly, I'd still probably go breastplate here if I was against a magical, but most games you should be against the warriors because warriors are very, very good right now. So you're going to go breastplate and go into that bulwark, like I said. And then, of course, you're going to go into the Sundering Axe late game. But she's another character that can get away with kind of going uh, a full tank build. So you probably want to go something like this. If they have a crit, then you can go Spectral here. Definitely an option. You also could go into, like, a Divine, similar with, like, a Brawler situation. You go that, plus your Sundering Axe right here when you can actually upgrade to it. And you're still really tanky with this build, and you're going to do a lot of damage um, because of that flat pen, the anti-heal. Divine Rune also is getting buff next patch, so that's pretty insane i think it's gonna have 110 power so it's definitely an option for these guardian solos especially if you're gonna play something like cthulhu as well which i think it's really good on and then this would be your full late game build but nonetheless you can go spectral here if you really need that you can go magi's even i think magi's actually really strong in this character just so you don't get that cc affecting you late game slowing you down <clears throat> so yeah that's audio at number three still very very good in lane and will still win most matchups against basically every warrior so that's why she is definitely very strong Coming in at number two, I have Odin. Odin's still very, very strong. The the nerfs that they gave him did affect him. I will say that he does have some uh, some. A he's a little bit less uh, strong because of those nerfs, but he's still a very, very strong character. The shield that this character has is just ridiculous and is up so often. Basically, the same build as the other characters, where you go into that black throne and go those extra health pots. Um, also, another character that I think you can basically go blink every single time early game and not really have to worry too much. He's very safe in lane. If you really need beads because they have like a high CC jungler and maybe like a character like Al Kwong that's going to execute you, then consider going that first. But most games, you actually do just want to have blink beads by the end of the game anyway. You have enough damage threat. You have enough CC to be really strong. You don't need thorns on this character or Sunder. But if they really are lacking in CC, then you can consider going like an Ankh if they have healing or, um, you know, something else like a Thorns or Horrific if a lot of out attackers. But for the most part, you're going to be going that. And like the other characters, except this character is good with Pridwin, so it's not like Nike. You're going to be going into that Mystical Bulwark combo, which is just what you're going to be going basically every game on most characters. And to Pridwin, and if they have crit, go Spectral. But like I said, I have been messing around with other builds, and I really do feel like that uh, it's pretty strong to go like a damage item here. Uh, not a damage item completely, but like a like a Void Shield, and then sell your Black Thorn for Brawlers late game. Even on a character like Odin would be really good. That's not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. And then your full build would be something like this. 
boom, and then sell this for brawlers. Or you could also go Erendite, like I said. Odin's another character where uh, Erendite's pretty strong as well. This would be your full build. And I really like, if you have beads, I really like being a little bit more threatening. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, you can also just go a full tank build, go like a spectral plus a, a mantle here, and you'll be fine with that as well. Odin is very good at surviving, and you can kind of just zone people and keep them out the whole time. And if your jungler is diving with you, then you have opportunities to kill them. But um, yeah, it just kind of depends on what you want to do. So Odin at number two. And then um, before we talk about number one, I'm going to give a few honorable mentions. I don't want to go through all their builds just because there's four of them. Um, and their builds are pretty much the same as the other ones. Other ones. <clears throat> but my four honorable mentions will be... Honorable mentions are not as good as the uh, four characters that I just talked about before. But they're still very viable. And like I always say, it's it's really just down to preference and what you're strong with and comfortable with. There are some slight things that make characters better in the matchups and stuff like that. But, you know, all these characters I think are definitely very viable. So... <clears throat> One honorable mention I will give is Kamazots. Something you can do with his build is go a little bit more damage. Something like a Transcendence after your Black Throne I think is really strong. You can still go pretty Bruiser with him or you go like more of a full damage route and just kind of carry in these ranked games. You'll be feeling pretty good. Um, another honorable mention I will give is Cthulhu. Cthulhu fell off a little bit. This is a very old build. Cthulhu fell off a little bit. I'm not going to go through his build, but Cthulhu fell off because of the Warriors being a lot stronger because of how strong Warriors Axe is with the 15 physical power. So he gets out traded in a lot of matchups and a lot of these other characters that I've been talking about and the number one character counter him pretty hard. So you don't really want to play him into this number one character that I'm about to talk about. But he's still very good and the build is still pretty much the same. Breastplate, Mystical, Go Divine, throw that in there, Bulwark of Hope and dive with Blink Thorns and you'll be feeling nice. Sobek. Sobek, I think, is actually pretty good. He's a good counter to these high-pressure characters, and I, you guys have seen it. I mess around with Meditation Sobek, and you can literally just sit in lane forever. You are so hard to gank, so hard to out-pressure. He's actually, I think, a pretty strong character, so definitely something to consider, and definitely consider going Meditation. And then the last honorable mention I'll throw in is Guan. I think uh, the builds are pretty good for him right now. He did just get hit a uh, buff to his kit, the cooldowns. For some reason, they always... Uh, this is a fine build, except I want to go Bluestone, I go Warrior's Axe. But basically, this would be the build anyway. Um, yeah, definitely a strong character. And uh, only thing you got to be careful of is playing him into like a Mulan. Mulan will definitely bully you or the number one character that I'm talking about. And that number one character that I want to talk about is Achilles. Achilles is, I think, the best laner in the game right now. He is so strong with the Warrior's Axe build. He is uh, probably the biggest abuser of it. He just hits so hard and heals so much. He can hit it long range with his one. He doesn't lose a single lane. There's not a single lane that he loses besides against Mulan and sort of against Odin. But you can play both those matchups where you just kind of slow play it and kind of get to those mid to late game team fights where you're going to be very, very strong. He's very, very good early game because of his auto cancel. He does so much damage. Mid game, he's probably the strongest warrior in the game. And then late game, he's probably not the strongest late game warrior. Um, I'd maybe give that to like a Nike or something, but he's still insanely strong and he counters like a lot of these characters, like he kind of counters even a Nike because you can execute her through her shield and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think this character is really, really good right now. And almost every game I go blink, um, plus beads. If they don't have a lot of CC, then consider going something else. But for the most part, blink beads. And, uh, yeah, it, it, this character is ridiculous. And the build would be Blackthorn. I like to go Mystical. I think you can go something like a breastplate here, but I personally prefer the mystical mail. See some other people building breastplate, but I'm sticking with this build, which I think is really, really good. Shifters, one of the few characters you go shifters on. This I think maybe you could build it onto their character as well, maybe a little bit underrated, but so, so strong on uh, Achilles specifically because of his auto attack cancels. He autos, first of all, his auto attack cancels are really fast, so that's really good, and he also has a longer auto range, so he hits more autos than other characters, so he just slams people in the early to mid game and even late game with this item. So, And then the rest of the build, is pretty standard you go bulwark if they have crit consider going spectral like i've been saying but i really like pridwin on this character because it allows you to ult to people late game and just kind of use that pridwin shield as a as a way to like actually kill them not to actually execute them because if you're diving a carry and they use their dash you can ult to chase them down with your, your pridwin shield and you're you're actually literally just going to kill them even in your armor stance so what you do with with achilles is you go into your non-armor stance your power stance for about i'd say about five items once you get like a pridwin or something switch to your armor stance and then uh, have that for late game but for the most part you're going to be no armor for most of the game and it's going to feel really, really good it's going to allow you to clear stuff allow you to trade really hard in lane sell your black throne for brawlers i think pretty much every single game i'd go brawlers just because there's always some sort of sustain in the game and it gives you a lot of damage and uh it's just really really nice and um this would be your full build Consider, like I said before, go Pestilence if they have a lot of uh, healing that you need to worry about. Um, you could also consider just still going Bulwark but getting Contagion somewhere else in the build just so you can still have that Bulwark, which is a really strong item. 
Um, and then also instead of brawlers, maybe they really have no healing, or maybe it's just a little bit of healing and you already have a brawlers on your jungle and you don't really care that much. Heartseeker, actually, I think is really strong in this character, and uh, you're going to be able to proc that very consistently and do a lot of damage with it. So, yeah, definitely something to consider. I wouldn't go Erendite on this character for the most part, but it's not horrible. So, that is it. That is Achilles at number one. As far as the matchups goes, matchups go, Mulan is pretty good into Achilles, and so is Odin, so you have to be looking out for that. Um... Ardeo is good into pretty much every single warrior. She wins every single matchup. Although I will say that Achilles can play against Ardeo in lane perfectly fine. It's really not that bad as it used to be. Back in the day, you just get crippled and you can't use your Achilles 3 and you'd feel bad. But it's really not that bad. Um, and then uh, what are the other matchups? Uh, Odin, if you're playing Odin, you got to look out for like Kamazots. Kamazots actually a really good matchup into him. Can always jump out of the cage. Just has so much sustain. That's really rough. Uh, as Ardeo, you do have to also look out for Odin because he can cage you and then you become a really easy gank and that's all of your sustain gone. Although you should be able to, to bully him a little bit. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Sobek can counter pretty much every high pressure character. So look to pick him in those matchups. Same thing kind of with Cthulhu. But I will say that you got to be careful against Achilles as Cthulhu because you will be getting executed in team fights or in lane and that's going to feel really, really bad. So that's pretty much it. Those are the top five characters in the game with some honorable mentions plus their builds. And like I said, I don't think really anything is going to change going into next patch. There are some changes to the Warrior's Axe and the Centering Axe and stuff like that, but I still think it's going to be the go-to because uh, it's just really, really good. The passive is just insane, and it still will be insane. So, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you want to see next, and uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. As always, stay safe and healthy, and peace out. Bye!